Okay, moviegoers, we have a new reboot on our hands and John Hamm is taking over Chevy Chase's iconic role of Fletch. Confess Fletch hits theater September 16th, so make sure to check it out in a theater near you. I am so excited to talk to you guys today, but I have to start off by saying thank you because whenever I told my sweet, sweet father that I was doing the interviews for the Fletch reboot, this man, I've never seen him so proud of me in his life. Like, <laughs> it was like I won an Oscar. So I just want to thank you two in general for making this movie. There, It's such a cult classic. And I'm curious, John, I know you've actually said you've watched this movie more than any movie in your life. So what made you specifically want to work with Greg on this project? Uh, well, there's a couple things. You know, yes, I, I've... I like a lot of people in mine, and I'm assuming your dad's generation. Really, uh, this was a this movie was a big touchstone for them. Most of Chevy's career was a big comedic yeah. touchstone for for people our age, and and that's a testament to his uniqueness and his incredible talent. But what I really wanted to do when 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 given the opportunity, when the rights to the rest of these novels, and there are ten other novels uh, with Fletch as the main character. Uh, that I had read when I was in my teens. What I really wanted to do was was get it back to what the what the tone of the novels were. Uh, the original film is sort of a one-off, e even though they made two of them. But it's kind of a one-off in its in its tone, and it's very Chevy. It's very '80s. It's very synthesizers and Harold <laughs> Faltermeyer and voiceover. It has a lot of these things that are that are kind of uh, signposts of the '80s and and work really well for that movie at that time. But what I knew, uh, Greg, having worked with Greg before, and what I knew Greg could bring to this was almost more of kind of a like a free flowing kind of jazz vibe to this whole thing that I thought could really work uh, tonally for a new iteration of this character that can hopefully be, you know, uh, we can tell the rest of the, the stories of, of the books because there are so many more of them. So it was definitely, as you say, like uh, really rebooting, reexamining what what the what the core of 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 this this uh, character and and this franchise really really is and you know we're at a we're at a moment in time I think where where whodunits are very exciting because they because they have answers and when people break the law they have consequences unlike seemingly the real world that we live in <laughs> so uh, it's a very uh, exciting thing I think for people to sit communally to laugh to follow a story and to have it be resolved at the end of a hundred minutes and uh, it resolved in a comedic way and in a successful, satisfying way. There were so many things that you kept and there were things that you changed. And I know people are probably wondering what you guys decided to do. So what did you decide to keep and what did you decide to change about the original? Um, I think, you know, the fact that Fletch, it's baked into his DNA that he does not respect authority entirely. He doesn't really believe the institutions are getting the job done. So he will gladly break the law, run a scam, lie to people to get to the answers. He, he wants the truth. He wants the bad guy to get caught. He wants the world to be a little more right at the end of the story than it was. So he has a moral code. It's just the way he solves things is slightly different than everyone else. And I think there's something really, there's a real wish fulfillment of that. We all wish we could kind of do that and do it as easily and, and with such a breezy manner like John has, just so sort of casually, you know, not give an F. And, uh, and I think the, the character had that in the original Fletch and, and that's in the books. And then the things we decided to change is like, in the books I started to realize Fletch really likes offbeat oddballs. He has a real affection for weirdos. So like Andy Mumolo's character, who's, who's a bit of a kook, he really likes her. And, and he doesn't want her to turn out to be the murderer because, because he, he, he thinks she's an authentic person and she's cool. So, you know, we leaned a little bit more into the, into the, into the weirdos around him and played it maybe a little straighter in places and thought of it as sort of a, a comedy of manners, a little bit less slapstick and a little bit more about the characters and, and, and you know, the joy of watching Fletch get away with this stuff, even though he's not always right, uh, because who wants to see John Hamm always be right? That would just be annoying. Almost. The idiot moron has something to do with this. You want me on the outside so I can solve this thing. 
Are you Fletcher? Yes, I am. Oh! I mean, no, I'm not. I always get that wrong. I don't know who people hate more, cops or reporters. It's cops.